these are the prizes for next month's giveaway it's a brand new clock 025mm micrometer in a box this was given to me by a viewer pure and simply to be given away nice little micrometer tap wrench there all it's got wrote on is steel but it's quite a nice one it'll be an old one decent quality and I've got no extreme plasma cups left so there's an Artec cup a Moog 250 Certainly three nice little prizes, especially the micrometer, well worth having. I mean if you win this and you don't need them, give them to somebody else. Let's just sort of share, share things around a little bit. Hi, my name is John. Welcome to another Sunday night nightcap. This Sunday is the first Sunday of the month, so the first thing I'm going to do is a monthly draw. I'm by myself, so I'll have to do it. There's quite a lot of names in the book, but there's quite a few coming in the last week or so. Right, good shake around and pick one out. One there. Come on, you bastard. Right, the name I've got here is J Cummings. Right, Jay, all you need to do is send me an email with your address and I'll get those posted off as soon as possible. I'm going to do another draw next month. Um, I'll show the prizes a little bit later on. If you want to enter the draw, all you need to do is send me an email. That's me, email up there, and all I need is your name, your full name, like John Mills, not just John. Your name goes into the bucket. If it's drawn out, I'll post the fries. Up, the fries. If it's drawn out, I post the prize off completely free of charge anywhere in the world. In part one of tonight's nightcap, I machine an end cover for the DC generator that I pulled a bit last weekend. Uh, part two is a bit of a mixed bag. I put another clip of an old video with some sand casting, uh, a bronze steam engine cylinder, because people seem very interested in the casting. And looking through the videos is certainly rekindling my interest. I need to get me awesome into gear and get me furnace set up again. I also do some plasma cutting, I do a house sign for a, one of my viewers, I do a one of my old fashioned table scrapers, tea slot scrapers. And I was in a steam rally um, weekend before last, I got quite a lot of footage, some good footage uh, inside the cab on Richard's steam wagon. I'll put a little bit of that on towards the end. I went to the local bearing supplier this morning and I managed to get the two bearings, no problem at all. Uh, both shielded bearings, both good quality ones, so I've got them. I had a closer look at this end housing and it's definitely been bastardised. That's been bored out to accept a bigger bearing for some reason. And on the end of the housing it had that bolted on to hold the bearing in with four bolts in there. That's sort of piss wobbly, not ideal. So what I thought I'd do is I'd make a new housing for the end of it to hold the bearing in because it's got to hold the bearing in on that face there on the outer on the outer race and I've got that piece of aluminium which is not quite big enough to pick the four holes up then I remember I had a lad in last week for a demonstration on the Artec TIG welder and he wanted to know what it, what it would like on sort of thick material when you can see it's not that bad so I've got that boss welded onto there so I'm going to put that in the lathe, utilise that, turn this round, the same diameter as that probably, and then I can machine it to hold that bearing into there and probably pick up those four bolt tools. So it's going to look quite nice on the end of there, a bit of nice polished aluminium. So we'll get it set up in the lathe and see if we can cut the corners off and make it round. I'm not exactly sure what it is, um, part of a jig fixture that I got given, but it's a bit of decent quality aluminium. It's certainly welded nicely. We need to machine a recess in the plate so it just grips our bearing when that's fully tightened down. And we can measure this with a, a vernier and it's roughly, roughly 3mm. Right, if we put a 3mm slip gauge underneath there, that's clearance. So we need a two mil. We'll try a two. 
and a 1.7 that gives us 3.07 Still clear us. We put a 1.8 in or a 1.08 in. Or a 1.08 rather. Right, and that's gripping there. So we'll now know that we need the recess. to be that's free that one grips so if we do the, the recess at that thickness there it's going to have a nice little nip on that bearing when it's fully tightened up not quite sure how true this is going to be I only want to take down the. That's not bad actually. Just want to make it round. Eventually did give in and drop off. I'm just going to machine it on that boss and part the boss off as the last part of the job. So, but it's run fairly true as well, so it should be all right. Pretty that boss hadn't been weathered on get dead in the centre. I put them up in the four jaw chop and squared it up properly. One of the stringy chips. Never have you tempted to put your fingers in there. Really you really care what it puts, fingers, make a difference to it. Because that hole is slightly offset. I'm going to go in with a really big stiff centre drill, so it'll pick the true centre up. Right, stop wobbling and flexing, so that should be a good centre now. I've had this little high speed steel boring bar for a long time and it really just works on any material. It's flexing, I'm being at the wish that I had. It's because there's a hole in there and that material has been welded, it's gone a little bit horrible. Try a more rigid boring bar in there.
what I've discovered is that this material leaves the machine very slowly. Putting a real good finish on there. Much better result runs slower, much better. Not perfect but a lot better. So that lines up quite nicely on the bearing and I've got roughly that's a sixth that will feel like it so that's going to lock that bearing in quite nicely happy with that very happy there's a part that off now and making this end look decent finish decent tape decent chamfer and then the four bolts I'll probably use counter sink cap heads, I'm not sure. I've got this setup ready to port that boss off. I put some copper protectors in just to stop damaging that face. I'm going to use new as a lubricant. Results with this tool in the past on aluminium. a nice clean area where the well's been. Settle for that. Not going to get much better at doing anything without spending a lot of time playing with speeds and feeds. <coughs> Just need to de rag that now.
Right, so that fits on there quite nicely. Locate it on the bearing, and I have got me a little bit of clearance on there, so it's going to nip it down nice and tight. All I need to do now is kind of turn it over, transfer those four holes, and then bolt it on, and that's going to be that bearing permanently in there. Obviously, I've got to clean all this up and paint it. But I think what I'll do is I'll transfer one hole. Oh, look, it shouldn't move. And all it's doing is keeping the bearing pushed in. The bearing's actually located in that, that housing there. 